guys. And uh, this technical difficulty just totally ruined any semblance of normalcy for an intro. <laughs> Okay. Come on, we can we can still do it. Let's do it. Despite the fact that I just put a raspberry in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I just finish. Okay, welcome to another episode of Venture Ventures, a D and D streaming event, events, show, and podcast. I'm Jake Friday, uh, and joining me are a a clamoring of comedians. I didn't look up the various animal group names this time, so that was just um, putting putting that UCB training to work. Uh, so uh, go ahead and introduce you guys, Justin. Uh, why don't you uh, start, introduce yourself, plug anything you want, and then just say what race and what your class is and then we'll uh actually also include since we were doing that last week um include your uh what's going on um like a little what happened last episode type deal with your character okay uh wow we're deep, diving deep into the race race talk i know <laughs> the, the only place where you lead with that yeah. <laughs> that's true that's true uh, hey, I'm Justin Matson. I'm a comedian in LA. Um, I am on Twitter at Justin Matson. Um, I'm doing a bunch of shows at the Edinburgh uh, Fringe Festival in Scotland. So I'll be there all month doing a bunch of shows. Um, and yeah, so I play Sarah Sierra. Uh, she is a Furbolg uh, witch, which is like a homebrew class. Uh, it's like a, a fun fun class where I'm a witch and I, I've just joined the uh, Venom tradition so I do a lot of poison and stuff and uh, my I, I'm blue with green hair and I'm like eight feet tall and uh, fur bulbs are known for their like foresty like hippy dippy uh, stuff and uh, yeah I'm a Charlotte and I sell a bunch of uh, homebrew beauty products uh, uh, Stairs is um beauty products and beauty brews I think it's called yep. uh, yeah so last week I um, we were products, I'm trying to remember we were walking down uh, to find uh, our friends and um, then uh, we we ran into a, a priest who was like missing pants and I gave him my magic pants which I'm kind of regretting uh, and he blessed us and then he promised me some money when we get back to the city um, and then and then we found a cute bunny and we tried to attack it which was a bad idea we tried to help it and that was a bad idea to attack us it and, did. Uh, and then I think I got the the priest's pants but they're really short for me so I'm basically like in like a very revealing uh, thigh high um, <laughs> trousers don't you um don't fur, fur bulgs have like an innate um, ability to cast disguise self because uh, they they usually keep to yes. themselves, so you could um, yeah, I have, I have make yourself done. shorter and make those shorts a little, uh, you know, more fitting if you wanted. I could, but I'm also like not embarrassed about my sure. race, you know. Like I feel like like maybe I'll if I'm trying to fit in, like if I'm like a you know if we're going to a party or there's something like I or we're trying to like pretend to be goblins or something, then I'm gonna wait to like disguise myself until I need it. Um, right now, I'm just like an awkward eight foot tall person in short shorts. <laughs> in Daisy Dukes. <laughs> out, so. Yeah. Um, Catherine, you want to uh, introduce sure. yourself and your character? Hey guys, I'm Catherine. Uh, Catherine Elise. You can find me online in various places uh, under Catherine, not I R L. That's Catherine K A T H E R I N E, not I R L. Uh, you can also find me on YouTube. I have a web series called The Fat Ones. Uh, we just I just saw that we are creeping up to 200,000 views on cool. arguably the most embarrassing yeah, 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 yeah. episode of the <laughs> of the series. So I was like, really, this is the one. This is the one when I'm like very vulnerable. But it's wonderful. We feel good. So please go check that out. Awesome. Um, bra, 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 bra. So I am. Uh, my character's name is Aradia Night Song. She is a drow who 
uh, just wants to cuddle and love and hug people despite her outward strange appearance. Um, uh, 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 just recently, I have officially embarked upon the way of the cobalt soul uh, as a monk in my mon monastic traditions. So that's learning for learning's sake. Uh, that that is how you will achieve enlightenment. I'm per -per -per. Yeah, last time I was the one that tried to hug the bunny. That's the that's the big thing. I also um, woke up with chicken feet after a night of intense drinking, um, and uh, despite being arguably the oddest looking person in the room, was very freaked out by these kind of Edgar-esque from Men in Black uh, human suit wearing things called the Sams, who apparently were nice, but wasn't waiting around for that. You weren't nice to them, though. Huh? You weren't nice. You drank their was potion. Nice you got drunk and, and they saved you from a bear? Apparently they were nice. Yeah, they saved you from a bear and then you drank their... I'm... <laughs> it's okay. When clarity is key. If I don't know <laughs> what you want from me, I'm leaving. <laughs> so... Well, they wanted you to stay so they could time the, the reaction. <laughs> it's like they were performing a uh, like a trial, a drug trial or something. Um, yeah, despite all of that, despite the cool event I could have had, no. But Bunny, that almost killed me, yes. So, I don't know how uh, how much insight Aradia really has, but she's out here. She's doing it. She'll get better. <laughs> all right, Richard, uh, go ahead and introduce yourself, plug anything you want, and tell us about uh, your character class and race. Okay, uh, my name is Richard Cardenas. I am a podcaster mostly. I do two podcasts. One is the Awkward Human Survival Guide. It's kind of like a comedy advice show. The other is Interview with a Nerd, where I talk to nerdy people about the things that they love, the things that they create. Um, other than that, uh, you can find me online on Instagram or Twitter uh, at Lev Richard C. Um, okay, and so my character is a Triton. He's Niolus Nymerith, and he... Uh, is also a sorcerer. Um, the last episode, he woke up in a fountain. This is where he went. He went to the to the middle of the town to, to go sleep off the drinks he had in the fountain. He was missing home a little bit. Uh, so after that, he uh, got together with um, Sarah Sierra and Prodi. They went to go look for uh, um, Aradia after after they got this belt that gives the illusion of pants and i don't really know what the <laughs> point of them was but but they were cool and we were able to uh, trade them for some blessings by the priest and we eventually caught up with aradia and we fought this this rabbit tree demon that she loved so much in the beginning <laughs> and i was very cautious nihilus was very cautious about this this bunny that was just bloodied on the floor injured um, broken legs yeah, yeah, no, I, I didn't want to have anything to do with it. Uh, Nihilus is very uh, unsure of this this world that he's in because he comes from the sea. He hasn't been up on land ever, and so now he's here, and he's, like, just seeing all the weird things. Aradia is super weird to him <laughs> because she just <laughs> wants affection from everyone, and he's just like, what is her problem? And, and Sarah Sierra is just way too tall and weird as well. She's always pushing her products. It's just everything that he, he is encountering right now is just a little bit weird and so we set up camp and now we are i guess arriving in anista is that where we're yeah we're we're gonna i think you'll get there you're you'll you're heading towards um the city uh it's a little over 100 miles so it takes some time um and that's where we will uh start um just a little background about anista um all of you would know varying amounts it's a the biggest city on the continent um it's an independent city uh and uh has maintained that through something called denizens um and uh they just protect the city and supposedly you've heard that um it's it could be zombies or ghosts that protect the city from invading um interlopers in other countries that want to take over the city and it's it's been protected that way for many 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 centuries it's one of the oldest cities um in the world and uh yeah so um you're heading there and it's a very metropolitan kind of uh, kind of old school mediterranean um 
city uh, where a lot of different creeds and races and classes inter- intermix and intermingle um, just to uh, with the singular goal of maintaining independence from the rest of the uh, rest of the world they're very protective of it so you guys are heading in that direction to pick up your uh, security money that you um, received from the venture venture agency adventuring agency uh, for providing security to a cornerstone laying ceremony um, in in the town of Strew. And uh, yeah, Max said, come on down, pick it up, or we'll, I'll send it to you. It'll take some time. You guys decided to go down there. And you were traveling, and everything's been great. And you're about midway through your, your journey. Um, I'm not going to prolong and make you um, roll excessively for... Um, scavenging or unless you want to um uh exploring or anything like that let me know otherwise i'm just gonna get to the main points of your journey down there um about halfway through you come across a man who's trying to fix his his wagon He, he um you come over the crest of a hill and down um about 500 feet 600 feet um you see a guy trying to fix his 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 cart, um, and he's. Uh, you guys all have um, pretty good um, perception, I think. Um, what's your passive perception, everyone? Um, let's see. Mine is fifteen. Holy schmoly! Yeah, because wisdom's like my number one thing. My passive perception is fourteen. Okay. Um, yeah. Where, where, oh, 11. No? Where am I? Yeah, I think you're 11. Yeah. 11. yeah. Um, in the little senses box, right? Yeah. We were it, on D. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I got 11. Um, so, Sarah and uh, Aradia are the first to notice. Um, kind of around outside the road and in the trees, you see some little creatures sneaking up and, um, would you guys, I'm sure you know what you've heard, especially a radio you've read about, if not seen, all of you have seen or heard of um, goblins. Maybe not you, Nihilus, since you're more of the ocean-faring type, uh, but they're pretty common, so you've probably heard of them. Um, some goblins are sneaking up on this man uh, and his cart, and uh, it looks like they're going to ambush him. What would you like to do? Um can we kick the map? <laughs> can you what? Kick the map? Yeah. Build it? Yeah, you can run up. Let's do it. I'm for it. Let's Are you go. sure you don't want to cuddle them, Aradia? Okay, okay. <laughs> this has been long enough. <laughs> Prody, Prody is just imitating all of you perfectly. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I think... You want to run? First and foremost, let's let's play it from back here a little bit, right? Maybe we don't just yeah. all run and go. Okay. It, can we, we like, have some time? Yeah, let's have some advantage. Yeah. Time. Yeah, you can see like four of them. So far, you can't see um, from your vantage point. Um, you can see about four of them. One of them looks a little bigger than the others, and looks like it may have more um, armor. And we're sure that they're going to attack him. It, they're, I mean, that's what it appears at least. Yes, they're sneaking. They're sneaking up, and they're kind of they're crouching. And what you've all of you have heard about goblins is they usually don't want to talk to to uh, humans or any humanoid type of uh, creature. They're usually there to make the most of an opportunity which this guy is not going anywhere so so they're getting closer and closer you guys are hanging back right okay and so eventually you see them shoot some two of them shoot arrows and uh, and two more um run out and do uh, attack them with uh little swords um yeah, and uh, he is 
he, he's getting he's probably dead um <laughs> no. can, we, can we do anything like... yeah you can you don't know if he's dead but you just saw him you know two radio takes out one of her darts um gotta get closer uh, aims it no, I don't want to get closer. It's You're like 500 <laughs> feet away. How how far is your dart going to go? Oh, damn it. Okay. I mean, not that far. That's true. I mean... Um, okay, you're fine. So far, they haven't noticed you. Okay, yeah, I want to... Can we do stealth and, like, sneak up as close as we can and try to get a stealth, uh, like, a surprise attack? Sure, go ahead and um, uh, okay, roll so your stealth. Roll stealth so. Yep. Oh, I'm bad at stealth. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, you you are a uh, giant <laughs> furbolg in, de- in in <laughs> Daisy Dukes or whatever they're called. I like Daisy. Okay. Let's see. Oh, okay. I got a nine. Okay. <laughs> what about the rest of you? Oh, are we all doing? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. If you're all, I mean, it, I got you don't. I'm at twenty. Oh. Wow. Great. Yeah. So what's your total? Um. You still need to add that since it's not an attack. Um, so just add your stealth. I have plus zero stealth. Okay, so 20. 9, 20. Catherine, what did you roll? I am currently rolling, and it is a 7 plus stealth is plus 3, so 10. Okay. So nine, a ten, and a twenty. Um, Prati uh, rolled really well, um, and uh, so let me see what they. Let's find their passive. <laughs> All right. Um, I mean, it's not. They're not uh, very good. The but... most perceptive bunch. <laughs> Correct. Um, yeah, you guys start to sneak up, and um, the the bigger one um, sees uh, Sarah, and as well as Aradia. What did you, what did I say you got again, Aradia? For sure, saw Sarah. Ten. Yeah. Ten. Okay. So just Sarah so far. Um. And uh, he yells out to his uh, minions. Uh, uh, presumably, tells tells them about you, and they look up, and two of them shoot off into the uh, two of them with the bows shoot off into the woods. Um, Can I hold my hair out and try to look like a tree? Sure, <laughs> sure. Um, green hair. Yeah, go ahead. What would that? Be um, check deception. Eh, more performance, right? Because oh. well, <laughs> yeah, there, well, there, there is a deception. Uh, there, oh, but maybe performance. I don't know. Yeah, uh, well, you pick deception or performance. Uh, well, I, I'm I'm fluent in deception. I have uh, I get sure. proficient, so I might as well use that. Yep. Um, okay, so let's see. I rolled. Uh, I rolled a two, uh, <laughs> and I I add four, so uh, oh no wait I I add three, so I got five. Yeah. Okay. So you you're not sure what a goblin laugh would sound like, but you think one of them starts <laughs> laughing. Um, I don't know what a tree looks like. I'm just like, is it like this? Yeah. Also, your your Daisy Dukes aren't... Uh, nobody's ever seen a tree in Daisy Dukes, so um, that probably gives you away. Uh, yeah, and they're coming after you now, and uh, the man by the cart is not moving. Um, and I would say they're closing the distance. Um, and Can I prep an attack so when they get sure. the rain, I shoot them? Sure, okay, sure. Yeah. Can I... Um, I'm going to um, maybe cast Ray of Sickness. Okay, uh, what's the range on that? Ooh, good question. Ray of Sickness sounds like, sounds like a great metal song. Like, I feel like 100% there's a metal song called Ray of Sickness. <laughs> or just a band. Yeah. yeah. 
Okay, let's see. I have all these. Oh, here it is. Okay, great. It is 60 feet. Um, but I think that's the farthest. I don't have a lot of long distance spells. I think 60 feet is my highest range spell. Okay. So, um, so unfortunately, I think I'll have to do that. Um, yeah. Um, and so that, so that one. So uh, you're just waiting for them to get within range. Yes. And there were, you know, I think there's like a way to prep a spell or something. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So like, so as soon as they get in range, it goes off. Um, you know, as long as, uh, as um, as they don't have any further range than that, uh, Aradia and Nihilus, what would you like to do? How far away from them am I? Um, actually, let me roll. Yeah, the, for their t- they um, rolled terrible on their perception, so you guys still have. Um, still have the jump on them. Uh, you guys are about 100, 150 feet. So we'll say 125 feet. Um, and uh, the two archers with the short bows are going to shoot at Sarah um, because they have longer range than 60 feet. Oh. I'm mean, I, I, I trying to think of... Oh, Go ahead. Oh, no, 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 you're good. I, um, unless you want to do something. If you have a protection spell that you want to do, then I'll, I'll let you um, do that. Well, I guess uh, if, we're, if we're going by turn order, then I, I guess I'm already prepping that other spell, Ray of Sickness. But if there's a way to squeeze in a second spell. I don't, yeah, I don't really have any protection yeah. spell. I have one. Roll initiative. Well, I should have done that before. Um, roll, yeah. roll your initiative. Ooh. I got an eight. Okay. Ten. I got a four. Holy moly. <laughs> uh, just one second. I'm going to go burn this dice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. All right, let me... I got these giant, uh, these giant dice, and they're, they're really cool because they're fun to roll, but I I feel like they're rating because I feel like they're really unlucky. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Who got the 10 again? I'm sorry. Me. Okay. Good old 10, 10 out of 10 Aradia. Uh, 10 out of 20, right? <laughs> Nihilus, what'd you get? 9? I got an 8. 8. Oh. Eight. 4 out of 10, 4 out of 20 doctors say I'm Okay. <laughs> 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 recommend. <laughs> The goblins are going first, uh, and they're gonna send. I didn't. I'm still learning how to play my character because like, I'm not. I don't have a lot of armor, so it's not like I can run in and like. Meet sure. Me I'm just trying to stay as far away, but I also don't have a lot of range, so I'm just like, <laughs> I'm like, I got like these two little jackets. Like, yeah, and you don't have mage armor or anything like that. You just have your shawl at some I, point, right? Yeah, I, I got. I just got my shawl, so my AC went up to. Well, that's not bad. Um, yeah, I guess it's pretty good. For them. Okay, so two of the short bow wielding goblins, one of them uh, shoots at you with an attack uh, of a- AC eighteen. So what that's will hit, and then yeah. um, another one shoots and it flies wide of you, even though you're acting like a tree, and so this guy can't hit the broadside of a furball pretending to be a tree. Um, okay. Can I taunt him? I, I use my free action to be like, oh, it looks like you suck at bowing. That's bad, but that's the one thing you, you do. You're just a <laughs> Yeah, he screams and goblin at you. Just some shrill, shrill uh, curse words, you assume. Uh, okay, so it's seven points of damage on the bow. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I immediately regret all my stunts. <laughs> and um, the other two are wielding uh, uh, swords, and they're closing the distance on you. Still haven't. They're far away, so they're not going to make it uh, because you're going to um, trigger your your spray, but the goblin 
boss man. Let me pull him up. Where did he go? There we go. Um, yeah, he's going to throw a javelin at um, at you. Because remember, you're the only one who um, they see currently. And that's going to be an 8 to hit, so that will not hit. Javelin goes wide and... Um, yeah, it is now a radius turn as the uh, scimitar wielding guys are still trying to make it up. Actually, you know what? They'll they'll make it within sixty, and you trigger your um your poison spray. Was it a ray of sickness? Ray of sickness. Okay, what's the? Uh... That's one of the homebrew spells. It's a, a range of sixty feet. I make a range spell attack. Okay. I'm gonna hit. Um, so let's see. Let me do that. Uh, is it a cone or is it just a? It's not like a uh, area effect, right? No, you said it was no, a range. I think it's just a spell attack. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, I rolled terribly. I'm definitely gonna break it. Right? <laughs> um, okay, wait. Let's see. I rolled a three, but I get to add five, so eight. Yeah. No. Um. These uh, goblins running at you have leather armor, so their AC is higher than that. Um, unfortunately, you miss. Um, and uh, so they're still closing the distance on you. Um, Aradia, it is your turn. You have surprise. Uh, they don't notice you yet. Um, I think because it's a little dire, rather than just hitting them with a the dart, I want to run towards whichever one... Um, maybe second, or no, is closest to Sarah. Um, so the ones with the scimitars or the uh, swords. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, I want to run towards them and then use uh, my quarter staff to like hit one in the head as I like fly over and uh, try and hit the other one. Hell yeah. Uh, so you got uh, what ability is that? Are you just because that's two attacks to hit? Um, do you have two okay. attacks, or can you spend a key point? I do I do? Yes. Okay. So I could do the quarter staff hit for the first one, and then maybe with my bonus action, I could do flurry of blows. Yeah. Is that a that? So you'd spend a, a key point. Is that how that works? Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, go ahead and cool. roll the first attack. Okay, first attack. Um, okay, so since I'm using my quarter staff, do I do one d6? It's d8, I believe. So what's the deal with? I believe quarter staff. Oh, yeah, d8 plus three. If you're using it, yeah, with two hands, it's a d8 plus three. Okay, great. Plus five to hit. I need to just get real dice because this is. I'll okay, send you seven. some. Oh yeah. Yeah, I've got. Bring it. I've got a, a problem with dice, so I would be happily <laughs> uh, give you I one of. Come get it for you from you because you're close to me. That's true. So you don't um, have to send it. So you said seven. Okay, I got seven. Did you, uh-huh. Is that with the? Oh uh, no, ten, total. Okay. Um. So that's not going to hit. Uh, you you acrobatically uh, try to jump to him, swing, and he dodges the attack while taunting you. Um, and the other one is right there um, as well. So you can use Flurry of Blows if you like. Okay, great. That's going to be roll d4. Oh, I got one, and then that's plus three. Ooh, so that one's... But you get two unarmed attacks, right, from Flurry of Blows? Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, you do. Okay, good. Great. Thanks. <laughs> so go ahead and roll again. Okay, great. Roll three. Plus three. Are you, hold on, did you just roll a d4 for your attack, or are you rolling a d20 for your attack? 
I did a D4. Okay, you, for those attacks, you want to roll D20, so you shorten yourself. <laughs> you just gave yourself super advantage, or disadvantage, excuse me. Um, I appreciate well, I just, that, but... <laughs> well, I'll just re-roll the last one then. No, you can re-roll both of them. If, if, if the first flurry... Uh, you roll the d4, then roll a d20. We'll just do the flurries again. Okay, flurries. First way, well, roll two, so that one doesn't matter. <laughs> Same result, we'll say. <laughs> and then the second one, roll d7. Or, I roll d20, I got a seven, plus three, so it's ten. Yeah, unfortunately, you miss, um, uh, and, uh, you st- our rolls are sucking today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Your, um... I, have a, I bought a real witch's uh, like box on Etsy, and like it came with a little, it came with a little crystal. So I'm like, I'm like rubbing this. Thing. <laughs> oh, let me get my yeah, worry stone. Yeah. Is it just uh, plastic or is it real crystal? I think it's real crystal. It's like, uh, I mean, it, the the box is like twenty bucks on Etsy. So I don't know, but it feels like a real crystal. If you t- if you if you, yeah, if you taste like it. Sport. If you taste it and it tastes like a, a tangerine, um, it's. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna try to trick you. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm gonna eat it. He's just licking. It doesn't taste like tangerine. Um, yeah. Okay, so. Um, I the, hope I, yeah. I'll play to any any kind of devil worship. Whatever I have to do. To <laughs> oh, I'm on. I'm on board with that. I've. <laughs> I've rolled terrible when a when I've been a player and was like looking for all sorts of answers. Um, uh, Prodi's turn. Prodi is going to Prady, save us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's see. He is going to. Um... Sure. Why not? He's going to witch bolt one of the. Um, scimitar wielding ones. Eighteen yeah, to hit. A good spell. And since he's a warlock, it's max level, and he hits. So two d twelve. I never get to roll d twelves. Holy shit! Okay. Yeah, so that'll be a um, nine damage to one, and you see Prodi come out of the his stealth. Um, you guys knew where he was, but the other goblins didn't. And he holds up his rod uh, and points it at one of the scimitars or sim- sword wielding. I keep saying scimitars. One of the sword wielding goblins, and uh, lightning shoots out of it, hits one of the goblins, and just knocks it back flat and it's not moving um let me see if he can move it oh no he can't that's unfortunate okay um and Prady is going to try and find cover behind a tree and that is his turn. Cool. And uh, Nihilus, it's your turn. Um, okay, so how many people are we dealing with here? Is it four or five? Five. Five, okay. Um, I think I'm also going to try to uh, get in there a little bit with um, Sierra because they are not having a good time. Um, so. I want to try to, I, I'm going to attack with my daggers, and I believe that I can have a bonus action if I attack with my daggers, yep. um, where I can attack again. So I'm going to try to do something similar to what a radio was trying to do. <laughs> okay. I'm going Thanks. to run by one of them and slash at them, and then uh, run by the other and slash at them as well. Okay. Um, go ahead and roll your attacks. Okay. Oh, you're... F me. And you're, um, you're, so, you're a sorcerer, right? <laughs> yeah, I am a sorcerer, but I want to get in there a little bit. Um, okay, so that was not a good roll, but... <laughs> so, remember, um, what, there's only one goblin with the, next to a radio with the sword, because Prati took one out. So, um, hmm. 
the way to picture it is if this is where Aradia is, um, and the other goblin with the sword is right where the tip of my finger is, the boss goblin who threw a javelin is a little bit behind that guy, like 20 feet. And the two goblins with the uh, short bows are flanking. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like a great boy group configuration. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> you know, I've never even thought about that, not even once, and I guess you are correct. I'll just... <laughs> well, I definitely I missed on the first one because I rolled a one. Okay. Mm. Um, so I'll roll for my bonus. That's what you and get for 17. trying to show me up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled a 17. Um, and so cool. I believe that does... 1d4. 1d4. Okay, and then it's plus 2 to hit. So 1d4. Well, that's your... So 19. If you rolled 17 on the attack, the plus oh, 2 to hit... Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I'll do 1d4. Um, well, that's a 1. <laughs> Jeez, you guys. <laughs> Lo siento mucho. Um, okay, Sarah, do, or do you want to move or anything like that, Nihilus? Um, you close the distance, but um, if you do move, he will get a an attack of opportunity on you. Um, um, I'd rather not risk that. Okay. So. <laughs> okay, that'll be your turn. Uh, Sarah, it's your turn. Okay. Um, that's a good question. What should I do? Okay. Uh, are these goblins are humanoid, right? Goblinoid. Uh, goblinoid. Is that different than humanoid? Yep. Uh, oh, okay. So I can't charm them. Uh, okay. Uh, I can cure their wounds. Actually, no, they're humanoid. You're right. You are right. Okay. Oh, great, great, great. That's why it's always good to check and make sure you're... Let's see with advantage. Um, how does Charm play? I don't really use that bad. So they make it. If it fails, it. Um, oh, we can't attack it if I charmed it. Okay, I'm going to. Um, I guess I'm going to try and do uh, Ray of Sickness again. Okay. On. I'm just going to better this so, so on which you got the two, the two um, short bows, the the bigger, heavier looking goblin, the boss man, and then you got the sword goblin next to Aradia and. Um, let's see. The bow guys are, are threatening me. Yep. Uh, but the one by Aradia also. Let's see. I wonder if I should get that one. Is this? Are they hurting you, or are you worried about them? Yeah. Are they hurting you? <laughs> Thank you for asking, but I think probably the boss man's the better choice. I'll handle this guy. Okay. Okay, I'll do the boss man. Um, okay, so I'm going to roll good. Uh, ooh. <laughs> I rolled a four. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and, uh... Let's see. And I, I add five, so that's a nine. Yeah, it's not going to do it. Great. Well, I just quit the game. For <laughs> I'm sorry. Lay down and die. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I'm a witch at all. Maybe I just like, add on Etsy. Like, <laughs> well, you are pretty low level, so um, you're yeah, still yeah. learning. Right. You're not exactly um, hocus pocus level. Uh, can, I, can I use my movement to run away? <laughs> sure. So you want to get out of range of... Well, I guess, like, hiding is a separate option, so I don't think I can do that, right? Like, but can I, I... I don't know if I can get out of range of the bowmen, because they probably have big range. I guess if, if I move a little away from the boss man and the physical, I guess the bowmen can still get me, but as long as the other three away from them, that'd be good. Yeah, okay. So you move as far away as you can, which your movement is 30 yeah, feet. I'm sorry, guys. See you later. I gotta go. And yeah, keep in mind, um, you're not always going to win a fight and there are times where you're going to need to retreat. Um, if you want to keep your character, if you want to reroll, we can arrange that as well. But, um, this is not like a video game where, um, you know, you can 
fight to the death and just reload. Um, okay, so it's the Gerblins. No. Gerblins. Okay, they're going to go after the fleeing Furbolg. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Because they're stupid and um, they should go after Aradia and Nihilus since they're flanking his buddy. Um, but they're going to go after the Furbolg. Uh, that's not going to do it. That's a nine to hit. I uh, know. And a... 13. What did you say your AC was? Uh, 14. Oh! So, yeah. um, maybe it's the Daisy Dukes you're wearing. Maybe... <laughs> They're very distracting. Maybe it's... Yeah. You're taunting, I don't know, but um, they miss you completely. And, uh, okay, we got the Bowman, Scimitar guy, and then Boss Man. Boss Man uh, is going to attack Nihilus. No. With uh, Javelin. That's a six to hit, so that... This guy yes. can't can't hit, and he's going to use the rest of his uh, movement to get right up on you guys um, and pull out his simtar and start screaming. Uh, mm. Okay, and then we got the last remaining scimitar guy. Uh, he's going to go after Nihilus. Two. That's a 13. What's your AC? 10. Okay. And... That's uh, six points of slashing damage as he swings back at you after you um, made two dagger attacks on him. Nihilus yells, what a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> um, and now it's Aradia's turn. Uh, uh, Aradia, let's see, I still have a guy right in front of me, huh? Yep, scimitar guy, and now goblin boss is... Um, yeah. So you well, guys, you guys are like next to each other. If this is Aradia and Nihilus, you guys are right there. Uh, Scimitar, Sword, Goblin, and then the boss just came up. Great. Um, then I'm going to back to back it with Nihilus, because why not? Sure, because it's <laughs> badass. <laughs> and, um, and I take, uh, I take my quarterstaff, even though it has hurt me in the past i go ahead and i try to do um a movement through at least the uh at least the scimitar guy and if it could go further than that cool okay so that is and i'm rolling a d20 this time correct i'm just saying it out loud because i I need to make sure i do it right okay great oh i got an 18 bingo Um, that'll do it yeah cool and then, um, 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 it's a one d eight. One d eight. One d eight. Oh, oh. Uh, invalid. <laughs> one d eight. Rolled a five. Okay, f- so yeah, plus three. Plus so you whack, uh-huh. you whack this goblin, uh, and where did you want to hit it and kill it? Because this will do it. How do you want to kill it? The, the uh, head. I want to. I want to put my quarterstaff through his cheekbone, stroll, sort of stir it up like scrambled eggs, and then push it the rest of the way through. Sure. You're welcome. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> his face goes through the cheeks. Uh, the the uh, court staff goes through the cheeks, and now his cheeks just look like green sc- scrambled eggs. Uh, yes. They need to be cooked still, obviously, if you want to uh, enjoy them. Uh, but uh, thank you. He's thank down. You. Uh, is that any bonus action or uh, movement? Um. Uh. Uh. Bonus action is a high five with Nihilus. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. 
And, uh, okay, now it's Proddy's turn. Proddy. Where are you, buddy? Oh, there we go. He, he's in Seattle. That's where he is. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. He's probably hanging out with MC. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, so he's going to use Sacred Flame. Wait, is that a... He doesn't have all of his spells, I don't think, picked out on his sheet, but I'll work with what he has. <laughs> okay, yeah. So a reminder to pick your spells, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, no kidding. I make super organized. I make charts and spreadsheets. Yes. So. See, oh, yeah, I got mine on an Excel. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, yeah. I learned that the hard way, because last time I played a, a American, I didn't know what I was doing. It was like, it took forever to track everything, and... Yeah. Okay, so he uh, cast Sacred Flame, deck save by the Goblin boss, rolled a natural one. That won't do it, so that's 1d8. Let's hopefully my DM rolls work well. And that's going to be a six, so not bad. You see the Goblin boss just light up with, uh, with a uh, Radiant Holy Flame and uh, looks... Looks pretty annoyed by that. So, and Prati, what else can you do? I think that's it, buddy. Um, yep. Okay. He should make a. He should make a noise like the sound of WrestleMania fans when their favorite heel walks in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For sure, he does that. Um, there's a big wrestling community up in Doomerville where he grew up. <laughs> um, okay, so it is. Nihilus, your turn. Okay, so we still have three people left. Yeah, you got the boss next to you and Aradia, and you got the two bowmen flanking. And okay, you got cool. Sarah running. <laughs> uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cast Magic Missile. and um, That hits. And Automatically hits. Just roll. To attack the uh, archer. I think I'm gonna get the big guy. Um. Okay, sure. Uh, so I'll I'll send. How about this? I'll send two over to the archer and one over to the guy next to me. Not the boss, but the other one. The one that I attacked earlier. Okay. So you're casting it at um first level or what yes. are you? Okay. Why am I not uh, roll it? D four. Yeah. Uh, it's a four, and then plus one. Ooh. All right, so so you um you need to roll for each one. Is that correct? Um, I'm not sure because it says roll a d four. Yeah, so uh, four plus one that... five. So you sent two to where now? Uh, I'm sending two to the archer. Okay. Yeah, and that'll kill him. Okay. that's 10. I won't make you roll the d4s again um, since you rolled so well. Um, that'll kill him. You got one more dart uh, that's going that's... towards the boss man, right? Yes. Uh, no, the non-boss man. Oh, no, I think I scrambled egged him, right? There's one more non-boss man, right? It's another bowman uh, on the opposite side of where you just shot the other one. You know what? Let's send it to the boss man. Let's get him down. Okay. So another five to the boss man. And he is looking bloodied. Yeah. Um, okay. Sarah, what would you like to do? It's your turn. Okay. I'm going to turn around and run towards the boss man, because I just realized I have a second level spell now. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and it gave me the confidence to shoot him in the face. Um <laughs> So this spot, I'm going to try and cast Inflict Pain. Okay. It has a range of 120 feet. That'll do it. Um, and so it's a second level ne ne necromancy spell. Um, so I point at one creature and laugh cruelly. <laughs> I'm, pointing, I'm pointing at the boss man, um, racking it with terrible pain. The target <laughs> must make a constitution saving throw. Okay. Uh, and if it fails, it takes 2d10 psychic damage until the end of its next action. 
and it has a disadvantage on all attacks, uh, attack rolls, and ability checks. It it uh, save, uh, it rolled a seventeen for a con save. Oh no. Okay, so it saves, but my I have thirteen. But it takes half damage. Okay. Uh, so that's now or at the end of his turn? I like this spell. Uh, on a successful save, the target takes half damage and the spell ends. Darn it. Because if it, if, it, if it didn't save, it would last a full minute. So it's 2d10. 2d10 psychic damage. Okay, go ahead and roll that. Yeah. Uh, ooh, I have a 2d10. Ooh. Okay, 11 psychic damage. So you laugh cruelly, and <laughs> you see his, his... Why is your cruel laugh so cute, Sarah? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, and his, he looks like he start to, he's going to start to cry, and then blood starts pouring out of his eyes. Oh, God. And uh, just, oh, he God. falls back. Stiff, and he is dead. Um, Sarah, uh, so you used your movement, or did you? Because um, I think you had enough range. Um, I think I used. Yeah, I don't know how far it was, but I said I'd run back. So let's just say I used. Okay, uh, is that your turn? Yeah. Okay, and um, so there's only one goblin left, and he sees his boss go down, and he is terrified. And you see a, uh, you're not sure if, if it's a stiff wind or what, but you see something hit him and he kind of falls forward. He starts to run and then he's turning around and he gets hit with something and, um, kind of just sits there and shakes and, um, is there a ghost? Hello, ghost. <laughs> and he is going to. Uh, he's going to. What shall he do? Uh, he's going to cast vicious mockery <laughs> on uh, you, uh, Sarah. And you're going to hear him. Sarah. He's going to say... Wait, who? This is the archer who just got hit by something invisible? Yep. And he's going to say, uh, You look so stupid in your Daisy Dukes. It's a stupid show. I never liked it. I never watched it. <laughs> and then he's going to... Let's see. I'm looking at Vicious Mockery. Wisdom saving throw. <laughs> what? <laughs> this is one... Yeah, his video goes away. His video goes away. His video goes away. That's oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> you you went you went blank for a little bit there, buddy. Because I can only assume that you were deeply hurt and offended by what was just said to you. Can you hear us? Oh no, no. it doesn't seem like it can hear us. No. <laughs> Hello. Hello. I'm sending him. <laughs> I'm typing, and I said, "We're giving you gold. You can't hear us." Yeah. You have no clue how funny we are. <laughs> Ask him if he can uh, see us or hear us. Hear us. Oh. I need to know what happens. Is he frozen? Maybe. Either just give me a really dirty look. Either way. <laughs> either way. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, there we go. It's now you're better. Good. Can you hear us? Ooh. Yes, now I can. That was yeah. Was what happened? It was like, yeah, you went away. The screen went black right when I was telling you what uh, was happening with vicious mockery, and I was like, "That's one way to dodge an attack. <laughs> Just disconnect." <laughs> <laughs> Fuck this! I'm breaking my computer. Um, wait, wait, I'm sorry. So was it the archer who just yes. uh, tripped by something invisible? Something or? hit him. Something ethereal-ish. Um, Rather than deal with that, he like turned and started laughing. <laughs> he was about to run, got hit with something, and then he turned back to you, 
And he smiled and he said, you look stupid and Daisy Dukes. It was a terrible show. And you need to make a... (laughs) You need to make a uh, wisdom saving throw. All right. Okay, I'm going to... Let's make sure your self-confidence is good enough that you can withstand this insult. Like right. You rub the crystal all over it. Yeah. You're, you're small, you're, you're smart and handsome, and you've got a lot of stuff going for you. Oh, a 19. <laughs> That'll do it. Um, yeah. So, and then I add... Sarah? Yeah, she's just needed confidence the whole time. <laughs> uh, so that's a 22. Yeah, you're fine. Um, okay. So nothing happens with that. Yeah. And, um... That's going to be his turn, and he's going to dance around on his tippy toes as he gets closer to you guys. Can we can we like do a perception check to see if we notice any ghosts or anything that, or if he, or if he looks like he's possessed or something? You make a arcana or ar- arcana check. I'll do it. Or a history okay. check, whatever you want. Um, I'm bad at both those. Do you want to do it? Yeah. I got a four plus two, so yep. I see nothing. You saw it, but you just don't know right. what it was, because I told you you guys I saw a, something. I got a 17 plus two, so 19. Okay. So you know, you've read in your books, um, you've heard about stories of uh, goblins becoming possessed. Um, uh like uh and they called it a nilbog possession um and it has to do with uh goblin gods um after being conquered kind of cursing certain cursing the race and certain goblins um if you'll notice nilbog clever D&D writers Nilbog is goblin backwards. I was very excited to say that. Uh, sorry, I took that away from you. I... You should always just check to see if I That's true. have noticed a word play. You're, you're exactly <laughs> correct. Um, so that's his turn. It is your turn, Aradia, as he dances forward nimbly. Well, can, can I ask Aradia, um, like... A question about this since she seems to have so much knowledge you can get like six words out because this is all happening in six right. seconds is this more dangerous <laughs> it's more <laughs> yeah it's more dangerous than a regular old goblin okay <laughs> um aradia uh picks up her her quarter staff and um, shout, um, Tiny Sarah, I know you are not you, but the you you were was not very nice in the first place. And then she um, uh, uh, tries to just like throw the quarter staff at his head. Arguably not the greatest choice, but she's doing it anyway. Okay. Um... That will like a javelin. Yeah. So roll, roll, the t- make an attack roll. Uh, 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 uh. Oh no! Is my Wi-Fi bad? Okay. So roll d10. Or sorry, roll ten. Uh, that is not going to do it. Great. No staff for me. Actually. I'm trying to figure out if that would just be improvised weaponry. You know what? That'll be fine, because you're plus five. I'll just say you hit. Um, uh, And that'll be, since you're throwing it and it's not two-handed, we'll say it's a D6. Okay. Because I don't want to look it up. Great. I'm pretty sure you're right, though. Five. Um... And then if I am using the quarter staff and I roll the one d six, it's plus three. Okay, so eight. For bludgeoning. Yeah. Bludge, and now you don't have a quarter staff. Yep. 
Um, but when you what you notice is um, when you threw it and it hit him, uh, nothing seemed to happen. Uh, it hit him and he kind of giggled. Oh. And um, you've heard about them in your since you rolled a nineteen with that check. Uh, you read about them being able to absorb damage and regain health from it. Um, uh, so it's only. Can I say what my last sure? Action? It only can happen once per turn for him, though. So okay, okay. Then never mind. I probably shouldn't be telling you guys this, but I am. <laughs> I was going to we... suggest we run away, but maybe we stay and fight the good fight. <laughs> do we think? Do we think it's just physical damage or any damage like spells is cl- included? Uh, you don't know. Okay. Okay. Hmm. So it seems like it's already happened. Well, it, yeah, it's it. Iridia took care of it for us, so <laughs> we should be able to damage it now for this turn at least. Yeah. Yep. So it is Aradia, that's your turn unless you want to move or do something else. I, I am going to try and get a little closer to where the quarter staff is. Okay, it's right by him. Uh, then never mind, I'll stay where I am. <laughs> um, I mean, feel free to get closer. Uh, no. Feel free to... No! <laughs> your game? <laughs> it, I'm not against you guys, I'm with you. <laughs> Uh, hey, I witch bolted that guy to death. Um, okay, so <laughs> that's true. That's true. Prati freaks out, and he—you hear him mimic the same uh, vicious mockery thing about the Daisy Dukes back, um, but it's like with a question mark. Uh, <laughs> Everyone's just being hurtful. Everyone's being hurtful. <laughs> but it's—it was it, like he's doing it, and it's a question, like Daisy, like what? Uh, so, no, that's not true at all. <laughs> <laughs> and he's gonna witch bolt the. Um, he's gonna run closer and witch bolt the the nil bog. And it's a twelve that won't do it. So you see lightning shoot out of his rod, and uh, just the nimbly. <laughs> Make me laugh every time you say that word. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. I know, because I'm secretly 12, that's why. Uh, yeah, so that's Prodi's turn, and it is now Nihilus's turn. Uh, okay, so Nihilus is like, this guy just giggled off a physical attack. This is not okay. So he's going to cast... Um, Let's 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 do Ray of Frost because if this is good, then it slows down his uh, speed a little bit. Guys, quick pitch for you. Since now we have Ray of Frost and Ray of Sickness, I vote that we just have a, a group of metal guys all named Ray, and then they they're like, you know, <laughs> their avatars can be the spell. Let's call the Rays. Yeah. The Rays. Get the Rays in here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna roll to see if that is good. Ooh, I got a nat twenty. Ooh. And then the two uh, rays, when you guys use them, the frost ray says to the sickness ray when it hits, "That was sick, bro." And then the sickness ray says, <laughs> "Dude, you're chill." When it hits. <laughs> Are you seeing Trey here right now? Where did that? <laughs> I just ruined a whole campaign's worth of storyline by. Turns out. Deuce and Trey were just running around as as spells. <laughs> so, uh, a ray of frost is that a uh, attack? It's a one d eight. But what what did you roll on the attack? Oh, a uh, twenty. Oh, so yeah. natural twenty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, roll the dice and double double the what you get on the. Uh... Okay, that's a seven. Shoot. Ooh. Um. Yeah. yeah. So you freeze this this guy, and the goblin is dancing on his tiptoes, and um, uh, raising his short bow in the air. And you see him freeze up, and you see this ghost spectral thing come out of him and shoot off into the forest. And uh, you guys are out of combat. Good job, guys. He's dead. Wow. He froze to death. Yeah. yeah. The the. Uh, 
corporeal form. Yeah. He's going to look for another goblin, it seems, or something. Okay, we should probably check on the guy to see if he's dead. Sure. I'm going to go grab my quarterstaff, too. <laughs> Good call. Um, yeah, so you uh, run up to him, and he is done. Oh, no! no. Um, what kind of stuff did he leave behind? <laughs> sure. Yeah, we might as well. You can loot him. I would like to. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let me... Let me grab some stuff. Okay, so you find... He seems to just be like, as I stated earlier, just uh, kind of poor. Um, you could tell that from a distance. So um, you find uh, a bunch of nails, square nails. Um, and uh, what else? Square nails. You find some... Um, some paste, some white paste in a jar. Um, smells minty. Oh. oh. Like toothpaste. Like toothpaste. Mm. Can I take that and add it to my beauty clip? Absolutely. <laughs> um, you find six rations, like uh, traveling rations. What else? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Maybe we're taking that. that. And... Does he have, like, a cute cape? <laughs> no, he's got no. basic villager. But he has pants, right? <laughs> yeah, he does have pants. He's got. Um... I take his pants off his dead body. Okay. <laughs> he was free balling it under there, so he is. He's. <laughs> I take the like little um, uh, the canvas on top of his uh, uh on top of his caravan and I just like lay a small square over his naked body. Oh. <laughs> That's nice. Uh do what I can. I, I blow my nose on it real quick. <laughs> no! Sarah! Sarah, let me have nice things. Sorry, sorry. You also find a uh a crate of like uh Lab equipment? I don't know what to call it. What are the different chemical, you know, the weird... And beakers yes, stuff. stuff like that. Um, and Lab equipment sounds right. <laughs> yeah, but I was trying to think of, like, the... <laughs> An alchemist uh, yeah. potion set. I wanted to be more specific than alchemist, but I wanted to... Anyways, this is the <laughs> problem with being a DM. That's DM problems. Uh <laughs> So, yeah, you've got, uh, let's say, two beakers and three flasks, some tongs, and uh, measuring uh, spoons. I don't know. Um, it feels like these are meant for you. Yeah, if you don't need them, I would love to take them. I could put some poison. I mean, you could break them if you don't want her to have them. No, no. But may I just like it, here's the part of this bargain is you have to stop blowing your nose on tiny pocket squares over genitalia. We have to stop okay. that. Oh, so it's just a tiny. Sorry. So are his legs and like pelvis exposed, but just his genitals are uncovered? <laughs> yes. Okay. Of course. It was it was just the way that this hair happens. Okay. Okay. I it would have been bigger, but I couldn't. <laughs> I love that there's like a whole caravan of fabric. We don't <laughs> it's a broken caravan too, so. Um, <laughs> but you find most of what you find is like linens and stuff, uh, and then you also find in that crate you find uh, two cards, uh, like thick cardstock with art on it and one of them is Ooh. is this it's jesus it's jesus it's science jesus well you guys uh stole the pants off of jesus sorry to say um <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't don't freak out jesus jesus is just a merchant he doesn't have powers in this world okay good um and then you find this one. Uh -oh. <laughs> She's a only Virgin Mary. <laughs> Look at her face, though. Her face is like, I'm not having that. Oh. Yes. So you yes. get suggestive. Oh. I get like, actually, now I can see suggestive. My first, my first reaction was like, she's giving you like, 
fuck off look. It's like suggested disappointment. Yes, yes, exactly. Like, are you really trying that line? <laughs> it's, the moment it's like, but also the maybe it'll work. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Hey, so you got these two. Oh, who knows what their relationship was? Could it be mother... Mother and son? Could it be lovers? Who knows? You know, that's a big question in the Bible, too, so I get it. <laughs> Mary Magdalene, man. And he had about uh, 20 gold on him, so you guys got that, too. <laughs> Swipe. <laughs> Great. It's not a bad haul. I mean... No. Yeah. It'll buy a lot of drinks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, are these um, cards... Are they, like, do these look like, like the versions of paintings in that world, or are they like... Just like is the other people he knew, or, or like what? Are, what are the you, cards? We don't know what they are. You you do notice that yeah. they are. The back of them looks like that, okay. and okay. Um, in a group, there's only two of them, so it's hard to tell. But in in the correct light, you can see that they have gold. Mm. Um, oh, these are fancy people. Maybe like a tarot card deck or something like that. You don't know. Make a history yeah. check. History check. Or Arcana, whatever you want. Okay. Uh, yeah, here, let me roll. A... Oh, <laughs> I got a one. I'll do it. Yeah, you don't even know. You're like, are these books? What's the card? Are these yeah. books? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> are these trees? <laughs> I'll do an Arcana check. Okay. <laughs> Is that what Sarah was trying to beat? <laughs> yeah. Was a card? Yeah. <laughs> I got a nine. I got seven plus two. Nine. Okay. Yeah. Um, you think this is could be a tarot card, part of a tarot card set, but you're not sure because you only found two of them. Usually they come in a set. Um, you usually don't break them out. So you're, it, it, you're not sure about what it is. Um, I take them anyway. Sure. Okay. Add that to your inventory. Added. And you may want in your notes, uh, whether you're taking them on, in a book on your desk or in the D and D Beyond website, add what they look like. Let me know if you need to look at them again. No, I know science Jesus and sexy Mother Mary. Science <laughs> Jesus? Oh science yeah. Jesus. <laughs> I didn't even look that close. That's true. Um, cool. So you guys are you you've you've looted the poor man's body and stripped him. And uh, you guys make I your covered him. yeah. Uh... <laughs> Thank you for remembering. <laughs> and uh, you guys go on your merry way, and you're about a day's travel out. So we'll say that you make it to the outskirts of town, um, and you're thinking like, oh, we should be there any minute. And you come over a, a crest, and you see you see the city, and it's sprawling. Um, one of the things you don't, uh, you don't see and you're kind of surprised about is there are no large imposing walls like, um, you might think a large city would have. Um, and as you're getting closer, you start to see guard outposts, um, with like guys who don't care, uh, you know, they're sleeping on the job. Uh, and, uh. So you're going up, and uh, you reach the uh, the outer muse of the city. So a mu is like, not to DM splain, but uh, uh, a muse is essentially an old school where you keep your horses, and then you sleep above it. It's kind of like a condo, um, but for horses. <laughs> and so... Uh, there's a new pitch. No, just <laughs> get the rays back. Uh... <laughs> they now work at a condo <laughs> estate for horses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this long strand of muse and uh, more people are there. And then you see uh, kind of off to the side, you see coming out of the woods, this huge, uh, pull it up for you so I can get you something to look at. Tell me something pretty. Oh, uh, it's not pretty, it's very scary. Oh, 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 
Cute. So you see this guy come out of the woods. No. And he's not paying attention to anybody or anything. He looks angry and he is um he is muttering stuff that what what languages do you guys speak? I speak Go ahead. Yeah, I, I speak uh, Elvish, Giant, Beast, and Common. Okay, so you hear, since you speak Giant, uh, what do you speak, Aradia? It's just under Common and Common and what else? I speak Common, Deep Speak, Deep, deep Speech, Elvish, and Under Common. Okay, so, uh, and pro- I gotta check Prati. I keep forgetting Prati's there. Um, yeah, I know Primordial. You speak Common that well, right? Yeah, he, he speaks yeah. RN, Celestial, and no mission common. Uh, doesn't really speak common. Uh, in your heads, he does. Uh, so this this ogre kind of looks like an ogre, and he has... Um, he's got uh, an extra arm, actually, coming out of his chest. Oh. Uh, like straight out? Yeah. Oh. And all of them are carrying clubs, and he is... He is saying to himself, uh, Sarah, you say, uh, you hear him say, um, I've had it with being thrown out of the city. They can't keep me out. Denizens won't stop me. And, uh, he walks through the outer muse and people are like keeping their distance. They're like, what the hell is happening? And even the, the very few guards that are out and about are just kind of in shock. They're seeing this giant ogre with crystalline scales and a third arm coming out of its chest. They're shocked, and he marches through the the muse and gets to the uh, what seems to be a kind of a not a barricade, but just a, a border between two two districts or whatnot. Um, what you what you notice is. The buildings change co- going from the outer muse section into what is called uh, upper atrix uh, district. And um, on the walls of this upper atrix of all the buildings on the outer walls, you see writing all over them. And as soon as he crosses the line, you see specters and you see ghosts and you see... Uh, all sorts of creepy things just appear and um, uh, they're wearing citizens clothing Um, they have kind of some of them look like they could be soldiers some of them look like they could be grannies um, you know had just have a have a butcher knife in their hand and as soon as he steps over they appear and uh, he roars and they don't move. And as soon as he takes a step forward, they attack him and just cut him down. Like t- two dozen of them just start piling on, just going going to town on him. And he is uh, trying to throw them off. They're not being thrown off. And eventually, after some struggling, he bumps into a uh, building to the side. And you see the walls of the building get hit really hard and flex in, but then you see this blue flash of energy kind of pull it back into a structured form. And uh, so he hits the wall, goes back into the middle of the street and finally gets taken down. And uh, you see his kind of like a specter float out of his body once he stops moving. And um, the rest of the ghosts inspectors grab his his incorporeal fo- form and take him off somewhere and so now there's just a dead scary three-armed ogre lying in the street <laughs> and you and and aradia this is your like you've read about the denizens the protections of the denizens um, but you didn't know it was anything like that. And, uh, so seeing it for the first time, it's, 
it it might as well be you've never read about it but what you what you have heard is that essentially um there are two ways to become a denizen most people call them denizens because it's clever and they're dead um so as an Indonesian citizen you can and a lot of people do this uh especially long-time residents uh because they want they love their city they love its independence they want to protect it and you can in a will you can you can uh dedicate your your soul to become a denizen and um or uh you if you get convicted of a crime and you're either going to be put to death or have life and facing life imprisonment um you can instead choose to take an oath and let me pull this up Okay, yeah. Um, so the oath of binding, you can if you get convicted of a major crime or are just convicted of a crime and are given a harsh punishment. If you take the oath of binding, um, you can be... Sorry, that was my phone. Um, <laughs> it sounded like the oath of binding. Yeah, I'm, I'm, ready for it. I'm not that, uh, that good with my sound effects yet. Uh, once we get our... Once we get our... Uh, our tech issues fixed. Um, so the oath of binding will banish you from the city. And once you take the oath, you have a day to get out of the city grounds. And uh, it's logical to think that there are some defined boundaries here, obviously, since nothing happened once he was in the outer muse and took a step in and was met with an incredible amount of force. Uh, so you have one day to get out and then you can live your life as long as you never step foot in the city again uh, until you die at which time you will become a denizen and protector of the city of Anista uh, you guys also know that the city has many different names um, it's called the eyes of Envir because it's uh, it's on two sides of, of the pinch point of a bay Think of, think of uh, the um, like it's like Strait a- of Gibraltar type deal, where really the two sides of land masses get at their closest point, point. Um, and uh, so they get about ten miles between each other, and the city stretches between both sides of the continent. Um, and uh, so the city's called Eyes of Envir or uh, the Broken Belt or the Cities of Two, Twin Cities. Uh, many people, especially citizens, because it has it's such an old city and it has so many names, um, they will lovingly call it uh, the uh, city of whatever the fuck um, or uh, the one with a shit ton of taverns um, because there's an island in the middle that's called the Isle of Inn. And it's an island comprised all of bars and taverns. Um, some of them are really old. Um, yeah, so you guys have entered Anista. And... Yeah, what would you like to do? You you uh, just saw this atrocious... Do, so, do we know if those deadisons seemed like dangerous like um like are we allowed to go in that part of the city or would we be also like killed kids uh whoever wants to can make a history check or a general intelligence check all of you make an intelligence check or if you have history proficiency add that if everyone wants to try walking in there and just see what happens <laughs> <laughs> i rolled a 10 well i think it's all it's going to be a very low uh, difficulty check. I got an 18. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, and Aradia, since you have proficiency... Yeah, and I got a 20. Yeah, so you know it's only these these denizens or denizens only come out when threatened, when, when the city is threatened with someone who has been banished, uh, who enters the city, or uh, an invading, threatening 
army or a group a uh, group of people and so you you're fine you're not gonna get attacked they still have local uh, district law enforcement because the uh, denizens don't they're not the law they're not the local law um, they just protect the independent independence as a whole so there are still normal city problems in a city of this size uh, just not that's how it's maintained its uh, independence and Sort of the backstory to that, the rumors of it is uh, the founders of the city were uh, twins, uh, and they're they're they call them the N twins, Y N N, and um, the rumor about that is is that they set that up somehow to protect their city, and each side of the city uh, is. Um, Innis and Ista are one of the twins. So each one had kind of their side of the, when they started the city. Um, yeah. And uh, so you'll be fine going in there. Well, I, I think first and foremost, we should go get our money. Is that yeah. Um, right? Yeah. Wait. Uh, I, are right. Um, my familiar, I, so I haven't cast my familiar yet, but my familiar is a spider. Yeah. If I if I brought him into the city limits, is that like, do, do people, is that typical to have like, oh, it's a cute little spider, or is it like, yeah. it be bad? So you would know as a furbolg that they're not, a, <laughs> yeah, especially something that gosh darn cute. Um, he's, so he's adorable. I hate spiders, and he only has six legs, so that's a another thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's, he's only got two hidden around when he needs them. Okay. Oh. Uh, Did you draw that picture? That's so cute. No, I just googled cute spiders. <laughs> Mission accomplished. Uh, so you know, this is a very metropolitan city. Nobody looks twice at you, and fur bulgs are usually there's a reason why you guys have developed innate spell casting to disguise yourself is because people notice you and you stick out. If you go to small towns and settlements, they're either going to ask you a lot of questions in the best case scenario of like, man, you're tall type stuff, or they're going to, yeah. <laughs> Do you play fantasy basketball? No, I don't play that garbage. Uh, um, or they're going to be hostile towards you. But nobody, as far as you can tell, is blinking twice at you. And uh, you'll notice that uh, people are using... Some people are using magic to clean things. Um, so it's not like press the digitation. Some residents are using that. So you should be fine. Cool. Can I cast find Familiar? It has an out as a... If I cast as a ritual, does that not use a spell slot if I'm out of panel? Is that how that works? Yeah, but I think it's... How long is the cast? An hour. Yeah, so you guys just want to wait in the middle of the street and... Well, I guess I could wait until it'll be later. I just wanted to have them around when I need them. But I could wait until tonight. If it's I... up to you. It's up to you guys in the group if you want to just wait for him to cast this in the middle of the street. <laughs> yeah. Is I there a like, fountain I... or anything that yeah. I can chill out in? Yeah, there's actually... Um, in the distance, because you guys are still on the in the outer muse, uh, you can see a few like a hundred feet in from where that ogre, dead ogre, is. You see a, a fountain, but there's no water flowing out of it. Instead, oh. you see oh. you see um, different colored. It, it, at first, it looks liquid and flowy. But instead, it comes out of this architecture, uh, this fountain uh, of a uh, fish, we'll say. Uh, and it flows in a similar vein to when you saw the ogre hit the, the um, wall of the structure. It flows in that way and flows out over the fountain. And... Uh, if you look closer and as you get into the city, I'll just say this. I'm not going to make you roll anything for it because uh, it's not being hidden. Um, 
you see that these buildings are look pretty damn old, and some of them look pretty decrepit, and the cracks are filled with this flowing arcane substance, uh, and it's being brought up by a fountain um, in this area of where you're at. So there's little neighborhoods as you go into the city, and each one has a fountain in it that is sort of like a central well of this energy that helps support the structure of this old city. Okay. Nihilist, Nihilist says, um, well, I can't chill out in this. Nope. <laughs> you can try. Actually, I shouldn't tell you no, but you can try. I can tell you... It doesn't look safe for me. Yeah, your expertise with water, you would know that that's not water. <laughs> the consistency of this uh, liquid does not compute with me. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, so Sarah, what do you want to do? Make you, I'll make you a deal. How about we go get our money, and then we can cast, the, uh, cast your spell once we get there. Okay, yeah, that works. Did you tell him it's a cute spider? Uh, no, they, I don't think they've seen them yet. And I haven't introduced Pucker. I just uh, I should have maybe I should have saved the reveal. I just wanted to. No, I mean you showed Catherine and Richard, but I'm just asking if uh, if Sarah would have. Not in game yet. Okay. I, 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 in game, I'd be like, oh hey guys, when you get a chance, I have to go get my friend. You know, uh, it'll take like an hour, so maybe at some time we could. I just have to get my little friend. He's fun. You'll like. Him. <laughs> I don't explain. Right. Him. Perfect. Can I can I cast disguise self to make myself even taller? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's not a disguise. Everything exactly the same, just taller. Uh, just taller. Uh, yeah, I gotta use. Uh, so I want to look really. So I, if I if we go in town, I want to try and sell my beauty bruise. So I want to look really hot and like really like uh, stand out. You want to make those so, Daisy Dukes get even more dukey? So I I grab, I grab like a dagger. Daisier. Even shorter, uh, <laughs> right in the side, and then I, uh, and then I, I cast this guy's self to look like ten feet tall, with like really pretty and like a nice glow. Yeah, what's the? I think there's a limit on your fur bog. I think it's like you can make yourself one foot taller or or uh, one foot shorter. Oh yeah, let me see. But it's fine. Uh, you can look that up while we're taking a break. We're gonna take a break right now, ten minute okay. break, and we'll be right back. Uh, every cool. everyone have fun on their break. Um, Richard, I saw that you were drinking some wine.
Cool. And we're back. All right. So you guys are journeying into um, the city proper of Innis, and you're going to go pick up your money from Max at Venture Ventures Adventuring Agency, and that is in the... It's going to be in the uh, Arbor Green District, and that is towards the interior. So um, feel free to stop me. I'm just going to describe what you're walking through if, if you know, there's something you want to do or ask or anything. Uh, so you go through upper and lower atrix, and that is lower on the socioeconomic uh, area and then you get into an even worse off place think uh, gangs of New York uh, mid 19th century tenement buildings stuff like that uh, and it's called the Gid Ward G-I-D and you see a, a ton of children running around a ton of all kinds, not just humans, but um, you see, you, you see, uh, you see maybe one furbolg, uh, and you see. Oh, hey guys! <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you see all all kinds of kids running around, um, and uh, they're running in and out of these big buildings that look that that could be orphanages. Um, and then as you, as you continue in to the interior of the city, uh, you uh, cross the corner of the Holding Heights, um, which is looks to be a lot of banks and stuff. And then um, you go through the Deference District, which is where all the temp- temples are kept. Um, it's actually pretty small for a for a temple district um, and because of that all of these temples are very jammed together uh, but they're all that's called the, deference. The deference yeah Got it. they're very jammed together and uh, they're all beautifully uh, made and everything's old the the, the uh, further you get into the city things get older and older and older you're going to see some new buildings if they if they tear them down, but a lot of these fountains, as you go from neighborhood to neighborhood within the districts, uh, the arcane energy being pulled up from beneath the ground is holding these buildings together. And some of them are... If they didn't have this energy flowing through it, there's no way they'd be standing. There's zero chance uh, in terms of the... Like some of them are missing the base of their structure, and so they'd obviously topple over without it. Uh, once you get through the mm-hmm. Deference District, um, you get to the Arbor Green. Um, and hold on, wait. Can we check and see what that, what the liquid is thing that's holding? Sure. As you, up? as you, yeah, you go through, and you're passing many of these neighborhood uh, fountains and each one of these fountains is, is, is different style and different aesthetic. Uh, but it, it just looks like arcane energy in the same way. So when Nihilus shot off magic missile, it has a similar mm. um, feel to it. When you touch it, nothing happens. Um, it's it's inert when you touch it, uh, but it's it's so it's sort of like uh, slime. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, but but not it's it doesn't stick to you. Um, okay. Uh, it's not very bright. It, it uh, in the, in the daylight, it's you can see it if you look for it as it courses through the ground into the various structures. Um, yeah. So does that answer your question? It does. Okay. It's not habitable. Yeah, it's not. No. You can't drink it. Uh, not yet, anyway. 
<laughs> but that's not foreshadowing. I was just saying maybe I should make it drinkable. Uh, in my head, I was saying that. Okay, the Arbor Green. And so once you come into the Arbor Green, this is the first... This is a really old part of town, but absolutely gorgeous. Everything is is overgrown, but in a manicured way. Uh, mm. It's not it's not French estate manicured, but it seems like this part of town was was uh, designed to grow in certain ways and who and you don't know how it's kept that way but it seems like it was designed to grow in a way that would make it seem natural yet beautiful kind of kind of how some uh have you heard of the forests that uh grow in certain shapes and stuff uh, various places around the world no uh and there's different rumors as to why some of them happen. Some of them are like, oh, yeah, this old man did it uh, 150 years ago. Uh, and then others are like, they think it's the wind that does it, whatever. But so it's beautiful in that way. It's still a natural look. Um, and then you see uh, that the this district is designed in a circular shape with a spoke, a giant, a giant in the center of the, of the wheel. Um, and the spokes radiating outward outwards in this district, uh, in the center, there's a huge, the biggest, uh, fountain similar to the others, but just monstrous, uh, five stories high, uh, at the center. And, um, you uh i'll say like when you talk to max he he told you like right when you enter the arbor the arbor green it'll be on your right okay if you enter from you're coming from the north unless you guys come from the south then it'll be on the opposite side of the uh, arbor green but hopefully you come from the north and just it's you can't miss it and so as you enter the arbor green of this section of the Arbor Green, there is, you see, a, a beautifully uh, designed building, a very Roman, Romanesque design, and uh, there's a wooden sign on it that doesn't really fit in with the, uh, the building style uh, that says Venture Ventures, and um, it's squeaky and... Nobody seems to be coming in and out of this place. Uh, yeah, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so when you when you enter, uh, you see a, a a lady at a desk, a round desk uh, that surrounds her, and she is a looks to be an elf or half elf, um, and. Uh, she goes, oh, hello, hello, how can I help you? My name is Martha. Uh, welcome to Venture Ventures Adventuring Agency. I look down at her from above and go, hey. She goes, oh, my, you're a tall one. Oh, you're, you're, you're pretty. I've never seen a furball in such short shorts before. <laughs> I can't see this guy itself on me, but it's really, it's really, this is how you could look if you tried my product. <laughs> um, did you, did you, uh, you didn't change your full board for, you just got taller, right? Yeah. Uh, well, I also got prettier. So <laughs> but I, you're still, I, fur- just, just like, I'm still fur, but still blue and green hair. And like, it's still me, but like much prettier. Okay. It says, it says you can, I can make myself three feet shorter. Oh. So I make, and I can make myself three yeah, feet taller. taller for sure. Foot. Yeah. Great. Uh, so I'll do that in like really pretty, like like gorgeous. Because I yeah, <laughs> and um, when you walked in there, you would have had to duck. We're all very cramped. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so she goes, "Oh yes, uh, you know, I I just usually rub some leftover grease from the kitchen on my face at night." And Jesus, 
<laughs> See, that's the first thing people need to learn is that that's bad for you. Oh. <laughs> so uh, we'll have to talk. Everyone thinks that, yeah. are, are, are all of you a member of her her beauty uh, company? Oh, we're, we're part of a gang that kills people. <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, so you, are you here for work? Of us? You might have heard it. Oh. We're the bed... Uh, big bed fellows. Uh, she, we're the BBFF. You haven't, you haven't uh, told Max or or she doesn't know either that that's your oh, name okay. yet. So she looks at you. She looks at you and goes, "Oh, okay." I and she looks down at her ledger and flips a few pages and she goes, "I don't see you here." Um, I take out my comm stone and show it to her. And so, like a light bulb, kind of goes off and she goes oh okay Lee, um, do you know who was your handler uh, who you re- who you were talking to you must be new here Max oh his name, was, his name is Max yes he's a little surly you know oh he's surly but lovable we all love him here <laughs> you could shout into the comm stone if you want us to get him <laughs> oh I- a I guess now. <laughs> and she goes, she goes, uh, she goes. I'll go get him. Uh, he's on a call, but he should be done by now. And she goes off. She's she's a bit like uh, the secretary from Ferris Bueller's uh, Day Off. Uh, I forget the actress's name. She the, she always played the sweet, the sweet um, lady. Um, I'm imagining um, uh, that woman from uh, SNL who's now a little crazy. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> Terry Gross or Ter- Terry? <laughs> Terry Gross, no. <laughs> no Margaret, Margaret something. Oh, God, what yeah, is Blonde? I know. Anyway. Blonde? Yeah, yes, blonde. I know you're talking about. Yeah, so kind of, okay, kind of like that. And uh, about a minute passes. Oh, yeah. A minute passes. Victoria. Uh, a minute passes, and you hear, you hear Max go, "Yes, Martha, I'm done. I'm done. Okay. Yes. Uh, who, yes, I'll be right out." And she comes back, and he'll be right with you. And uh, thirty seconds pass, and you see. Let me pull up a picture. Guys, I'm so excited. What's he gonna look like? <laughs> I yeah. turn to Sarah and I say, uh, "Elves are usually pretty beautiful, but I think this grease on her face is really ruining it for her." <laughs> it's really clogging the pores. She doesn't know that, but I'll tell her. Uh, I need to send this to you guys. <laughs> let me let me throw it in Discord chat. That's my whole music, by the way, while we're holding and waiting. Uh, uh, okay. Oh, her name is Edie McClurg, the Ferris Bueller woman. There we go. Oh, love her. Oh, that's not it. (laughs) (laughs) But it should be. Did you just delete it? Yeah, I have a better one. <laughs> okay. Donde esta la Max? <laughs> the Max? <laughs> Sorry. Okay, here we go. Let's see, let's see. Not weird teeth, Max. There we go. <laughs> do, do you have a, a story campaign where he gets denture? <laughs> yeah, the person I had draw it, I uh, I said, uh, go ahead and fix that. Okay, put it in group chat. Let me. S- I see. He is. So let me describe it. Jaw. Yeah, let me describe it. He's basically. You see this coming around the corner. You see a floating head, uh, and he is. He's got a square jaw, a big mustache, a big, thick uh, Tom Selleck mustache, and his eyebrows are wings. 
and he's using his head is floating. He doesn't have a neck. It's just a floating head, uh, bright gold eyes, wings for eyebrows. Uh, yeah. What else do I need to say about it, Catherine? I put it in chat. You guys can see it, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I, I uh, kind of a piggyish nose. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, and he, yeah, golden eyes. Uh huh. He comes floating around the corner and goes, "Oh, you must be a radia." Oh, hi! You don't have a body. <laughs> I just noticed you don't have a body. <laughs> yeah, that's. Let's get this out of the way now. Uh, I don't have a body. I don't have legs. I don't have feet. I don't have a stomach. <laughs> Uh, writing all this down in, in my head. And I turned over. I, Is there a neck? There's no neck. I don't have a neck. So let's get this out of the way. And while we're at it, I'll say, you're very tall. Do you play basketball? No, he doesn't say that. Um, <laughs> uh, no, no, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to be rude. I was just very surprised. No, I, sure. I get it. It's, it's nothing. That's, let me ask you a question. Do you have a bunch of spider friends since you're a drow? Are you friends with all the spiders? I do. I have a lot of them. I'm not even a drow, but I got tons of Okay, tall guy. <laughs> but I do understand what you mean, this idea of preconceived notions, like the preconceived notion I had that you had a body, but it doesn't make you any less of a person without Radia, one. I think it's perfectly I'm... fair that you thought this guy would have a body. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you, blue man? It does. Martha, put away your water. Person. He might take your water. Yeah. No, I need some of that. And uh, he he's doesn't he's surly, but he doesn't look upset. Um, he seems to have a relatively thick skin, and he goes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on his face. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, he, you see a, a a spectral mage hand. One of you has mage hand, right? Not me. I don't I think yeah. Prady does. See, Prady. Um. Well. Yeah, Prady has mage hand, which is just like a useful utility spell cantrip and you see one of his pink hands spectral hands comes out and he holds it out in front of him he goes can i have the stone please <laughs> Here. and it, you drop it in the hand and the hand grabs it and floats over to martha and hands it to martha she puts it away somewhere he goes, all right, let's get you guys paid. So I I heard there was a bit of a problem, uh, but you guys look fine to me. Uh, how were the lodgings where we put oh, you? wonderful. Can I tell you, we cuddled all night. It was <laughs> the greatest experience. <laughs> yeah. you, I mean, I, it's great to bond if you're going to continue to be uh, an adventuring group, but... I, you all had your own individual rooms. I paid. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe someone didn't mention that. <laughs> checking in. Okay. Well, I guess it's all water. It was me. I didn't tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's all water under the bridge now. Uh, so you guys seem to be. I do mean for a radio to be this creepy of a <laughs> uh, he, he He's kind of weird. He doesn't know what to think about that. Uh, and he just goes, so you guys at Cuddle, I'm going to assume that you guys will continue to adventure together. Is that, if that's the case, I will need a, usually groups and crews, bands, whatever you want to call them, go by a name so we don't have to use everyone's first name when referring to them. Did Martha not tell you? She didn't. She just said that some adventurers were here 
uh, extremely tall, good-looking Furbolg uh, female. <laughs> By the way, uh, Sarah is your name, I, I'm guessing. Uh, a little spoon. I was just joking with you when I said man. Uh, <laughs> so what's it's what's the name? She didn't tell me. I, Aradia gets in her like very excited <laughs> toast and she goes, we are the big best fellows. Did I say it right? <laughs> Did I say it right? Tell me. It was perfect. Big, big, uh, big so bed. You can nickname us the B. <laughs> Go. All right. You, I don't need an acronym. I don't need a nickname. The BBF. Okay. The BBF. If you want yeah, to be the called BBF. the ugh, <laughs> and you see a spectral hand, another spectral hand, kind of scratches eyebrows like I just did, uh, and he goes, "I'll just whatever." Uh, Martha, did you get that? Yeah, I did. I did. Big bedfellows. <laughs> and he goes, all right. Um, I love Martha. Uh, <laughs> listen, um, what was Martha? What did we say we'd pay them again? And she starts. Ten million? I think it was ten million. <laughs> I second that. I second it. I heard it, too. I heard it, too. Well, I'm impressed you guys can know that number that that's high, but uh, it's not ten million. Uh, let me. Martha's looking. So is Jake. Jake is looking. Oh, I. I'm sorry. I. It was nine million. Oh. <laughs> that would break oh, the game. Now that you say it, it sounds right. <laughs> yeah. Or I could just give you nine million and then just appropriately raise the price of everything <laughs> like an ale an ale will be a thousand gold uh, okay looking 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 it'll be like San Francisco <laughs> I think it was in the the letter he sent you guys oh or do you guys have it written down be checking. yes that would be uh, fantastic I mean, uh, I have notes. I can take notes. I don't know how deep it is. Uh, let me see. If not, I can just make it up now. It may be less. It may be more than what it was. Um, let's see. Um, Troy to the world. Yeah, I don't think I wrote down. All right. Make it up, and I'll keep looking. Uh, okay, Martha, did you find out what we owe them? These fine, big bedfellows. Uh, and she goes, oh, yes, Max. It'll be uh, 25 gold pieces each for one Ooh. day's work. Seems a little stingy now that we threw out the other numbers. But fine. <laughs> Actually, it's, I mean... I mean, it's very impressive as well, but <laughs> we stopped it at 10 million. <laughs> uh, it would have... That's like a few months' wages for normal jobs. So adventuring is very lucrative, but it's dangerous, and that's why it's lucrative. Uh, Listen, man in the sky, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying. <laughs> the gr the, yeah, the overlord is <laughs> noting your displeasure. <laughs> The skies grow dark. Um, uh, so yeah, he uh, Martha goes back somewhere and comes out with your money, hands it to you, and uh, here you go. Oh, thank you for your your work here. Uh, hopefully, you'll come back and uh, eventually you'll become a full fledged uh, member and trustee of this fine organization. And uh, Max goes, yes, she is. She is uh, not uh, extremely nice, but uh, Martha, they will need to do a few more things to become full-fledged full trustees in this organization. Uh, so what's what's up, big bedfellows? Do you uh, want another gig, or what's uh, what can I help you with? Well, I am interested to know if we wanted to be full-fledged people 
what we would have to do? Is it just doing more stuff for you? Essentially? Uh, well, you proved a lot in your uh, first mission because, quite frankly, uh, obviously we didn't know it would be we probably would have sent a few more people if we knew a bunch of disembodied hands and pelvises and legs and feet were gonna run amok and a bunch of crazy cultists were gonna attack so i mean you're 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 well on your way, uh, but basically... To be honest, when you said it out loud again, it re-traumatized me. I just want to make it clear. <laughs> Thinking about I'm, it. I'm having nightmares of pelvises. <laughs> 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 and he goes, to be honest, when I heard that there were pelvises trying to kill people, I had a good laugh about that. Uh, not to, you know, make make light of your pain here, but... Uh, pelvis is it's, it's a funny hold on wait are these friends of yours these like disembodied <laughs> <laughs> did you know that? I am offended that <laughs> you would even say that and no uh you know Martha, where did you put that spider I killed earlier? I want to ask a radio question. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I just, I didn't mean to. I'm sorry. I only, my only friends are books. I'm sorry. I don't know what I'm saying. You know, most drow are known to be pretty, pretty evil, but you're on the nicer side, but still pretty mean. Uh, anyways, so, no, I don't know them, and just crazy cult skinned cult cultists and whatever i don't <laughs> anyways uh he got flustered i flustered him <laughs> do you guys need a little bit of truth to it oh i was gonna ask the um there you were asking me about what is involved in becoming a member uh you you do uh, another job, and you become in uh, uh, have a vested interest in the business. And at the end of a year, all the members are paid out in dividends for what the business made. And we're all working to grow this agency. And uh, it's not just the big bedfellows, uh, not the uh. Not the uh, weirdest name of adventures we have in Adventure Ventures, but it's it's up there. Uh, I wouldn't call it weird. <laughs> well, I guess you're right. It's not so weird until you hear about the context. Uh, <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> um, uh, it's, it kind of sounds, when you think about the, the context, it sounds like the beginning of a shitty joke, like uh, a drow, a furbolg, a triton, and a, and a kenku walk into a bed, lay down in a bed, uh, except the punchline is shitty. Yeah. Uh, uh, anyways, it's just like becoming a, a member, a, a part owner of the business. That's what's involved in it, and... Uh, you know, it, we all succeed if if you succeed and vice versa. Does that answer your uh, question, Aradia? It does, and thank you. And you know what? I am for us getting another task, and then we can leisurely sort of walk around town knowing that eventually we'll have another task. Sure. Uh, so you want to hear about what jobs we currently have? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, he... In the administrative position. <laughs> uh, Martha. Martha's it right now, and uh, I love her like a sister. The sister I never had. And uh, she's got a secured position, so. Sorry, okay. Sarah. That's fine. Just thought I'd ask. Uh, we'll do killing. It's fine. We're good at it. <laughs> Max. Uh, is handed he uh, a sheet and uh, on it he starts reading okay what, let's see what we got here uh, there's a bounty on um, uh, eye stocks of spectators 
uh, it's uh, 60 gold per stock. Um, if you don't know what a spectator is, it's like me, but scary, not as cute, and uh, has four eye stocks sticking out of it that shoot death and destruction and confusion and whatever. Um, now we know that Max has a very high sense of self. Uh, uh, so yeah, there's that bounty on uh, spectators. You can find them in the sewers underneath the city. Um, and then we got, what else? What else? Uh, there's reports. The city has put out a a job for there's, uh, dock workers are apparently being scared by some whistle. It doesn't sound that bad to me, but there's some whistle. Uh, the dock workers are 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 not are not coming to work or refusing to go to work or something. It, can I tell you, whistling can be a form of harassment, so I do understand why that would be frightening. If it's every day, you know. Yeah. Yeah, you can only take so much. It's true. He just... Like, hey, Doc Worker. Thank you. <laughs> they co- yeah, he smiles and, and nods and, and uh, goes, well, they're calling it the death whistle, so... Uh, I, there's no reports that it's killing anyone, uh, but whatever. So they want that investigated. Uh, another one is uh, a few of the arcane fountains in the city are uh, being stopped up uh, and uh, the city's, uh, for anyone who clears the blockages, uh, they don't know what's blocking them. Uh, anyone who clears the blockages gets a reward uh, for finding and fixing the cause of it. Uh, okay, we also have um, uh, the Zekin Collective needs a group uh, to escort and provide security for a supply caravan going to Revan's Run. That is pretty far up there. Uh, but if you're looking to go north, that's an option. It's 75 gold per person for completion and safe uh, transport of the caravan. Uh, the the uh, Zekin Collective also um, had some of their merchandise. I call it merchandise, but they call it, um, you know, their whatever. I forget what they call it. Anyways, it's a, it's <laughs> diamonds. Diamonds. Uh, Quick question about the fountain expedition and the death whistle. What what's the what do we get? To those. Oh, did I forget that? Um, yeah, so the city hasn't are there put a... benefits. <laughs> uh, there are health benefits once you guys join Venture <laughs> Ventures. Yes, actually. Okay. No. Uh, yes. Uh, like six days now and just not come to work. For <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the so the dock workers. There's a lot of vested interest down in the docks. A lot of business goes through there, as you can imagine. Uh, so the city will be grateful. The businesses and business people will be thankful. They don't even know what it is yet, so they don't know what to. If it's a if it's a dragon, it's going to be a lot. If it's uh, some tiny kid blowing through a conch shell. It's then he's my new hero because <laughs> let me tell you, it takes a lot of guts. Anyway, so that's with the whistle, and then you asked about the fountains. It was uh, 200 gold pieces reward for uh, that's not per person, that's split uh, total for finding and fixing the cause. Uh, the Zekin Collective, those are the that's the exchange who hoard all the diamonds to make sure the uh, resurrection spells and things of their sorts aren't given out freely, and so they control that. You ask me, it's it's wrong to profit from the permanent death of people in the world, but uh, they control the diamonds, they control resurrections and 
all that nonsense. I can understand. They would say that it's, you know, keeping necromancy and undead crap in check, but... Mm-hmm. Um, anyways, uh, that, I said the Zekin Collective, and then there's one that's kind of a... I, I'm waiting for someone to take this because it's a nice... Basically, the orphanages and the Gid Ward are experiencing uh, uh, a bunch of violence. Uh, a few of the orphanages, uh, the kids are getting... Uh, these kids have had rough lives, but uh, a lot, they're a lot more violent than usual. And um, the, uh, the, the uh, managers of the orphanages are, are uh, trying, they appeal to the city and apparently the city won't won't send anyone. Uh, they, they think it's a internal problem, uh, but uh, the contact here believes it may be supernatural. And payment can be arranged, but as you can imagine, um, they're not, uh, they don't have very many funds. Uh, so that's, that's another option. And uh, I think that's all we got right now. So weapons are being killed by ghosts, and the city's like, mm, no, that's your thing. What? It's the orphans? No, they're not being killed. Um, he, they're just kids are being violent. Um, and uh, the person, oh. the person who, who put in the ad or or appealed to the various uh, venture adventuring uh, companies, is asking for help because the city is just like. They're orphans. They get violent sometimes. Deal with it. Like, what do you want us to do? And are shitty. Yeah. <laughs> is this a Richard uh, thing or both, <laughs> or or a nihilist thing or both? Uh, both, definitely both. <laughs> nihilist uh, here. Um, uh, the the whistling. Uh, uh, thing really appeals to me because as you all know I'm still trying to learn how to whistle and I feel like I could really learn something from this, this entity um, and that appeals to me most especially because I think children are just so shitty uh, that there's probably nothing to be done about that and as we know, you're just trying to get near some water. We know how much you want to be near the water. Oh, oh, water. <laughs> well, that's right. I mean, if you go into the sewers, there's water down there. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's yeah, not. That's the kind that nihilists like. <laughs> what, what, yeah. uh, what, do tritons not pee and poop? Come on. <laughs> But they don't mean swim in it, so that's not... We do, we do have designated areas for that. Oh, that's interesting. How does, uh... What if the current changes? No, we live in underwater <laughs> grottos. So and that's ooh, in Mariana's we, trenches. <laughs> uh, we, we have little oh. caves that are underwater that we can just go do our business and not have to... So you got, you got poo caves. We have poo ca- We don't call them that. They must right? smell terrible. It's it's quite disturbing. Or do you go in an area and then you have sanitation tritons that come by and take it to the grotto, the, the, the shit grotto. And... We allow the crabs to go in there and have at it. Oh, uh, I guess that's nice. That, I don't that know. doesn't sound too bad. It actually kind of makes sense. Uh, well, I didn't expect to learn anything from you folk, but <laughs> I did. Uh, the opportunity to, to teach you all about my... my... So, so that those are your options. I'm, I'm fine with um, anything that keeps us here for a little bit. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. Like, I, I don't want to do the Zeke in one because leaving the city so soon is like that. Yeah. So. And I'll be honest, they can be assholes sometimes. Uh, anyways, uh, all right, so that's your pick. Um, I'm okay with the whistle. I mean, you can always do all of them. Yeah, we'll start with the whistle. Oh, can we, is it, is it like, you can, can we agree to do them all? And then if we run into a spectator while we're searching the whistle thing, we can kill them both? Yeah, you'll get paid uh, per stock. 
on the spectator and then uh uh everything else it's like if you figure out the whistle you can uh uh, and you f- you figure it out and you come back and somebody's already done the other ones or one of the other bounties, then you c- obviously can't do it. Um, but if you okay. figure out the whistle while killing a bunch of spectators, while calming a bunch of orphans, while <laughs> protecting a bunch of diamonds, while, you know, it just, you can do it all. Um so that's right we're we're modern women we can have it all <laughs> we sure I'm are i'm a busy <laughs> career woman <laughs> proddy proddy goes he just mimics exactly what you said aradia uh when you say it <laughs> thumbs up <laughs> um, i like the idea of us let's do it all if we um as as we can and start with the whistle i like that okay and he goes all right um they said you can talk to the dock master down there. His name is, uh, and he looks down. Uh, Martha, what, what's his name? Oh, his name is Joseph Campbell. Joseph Campbell? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get some stories from him. Some mythic, <laughs> mythic, perfectly structured hero's journeys. Uh so you got that and um yeah and we're at you guys want to keep going or we can call it here this is a good stopping point um i think i think it's a good stopping point and maybe we should let sarah like get started with yeah we'll say her we'll say uh yeah. you want to ask max if you can just do it here <laughs> <laughs> hey max uh, i have a friend who's uh, real cute he's like a, a, a Spider, but he doesn't like to be called that. He's, his name's Pocker. <laughs> oh, be careful if you say a spider in front of Aradia. She'll make all kinds of assumptions. <laughs> I think we've, we've got a sick burn. That's all I'll say. Sick burn. <laughs> so you want to call your spider, but just are you going to... You have a familiar is what you're telling me. Yeah, it just takes like one little hour. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't care. I just like pull out like I just pull out like chicken bone. Yeah, and he goes, he goes, stop, 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 stop. and two two um mage hands float, and he goes, stop, stop, stop. I've got a back empty office. You can do it in there. Let's 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 you know keep this area clean for any future customers. We don't need wizard nonsense gizzards and stuff everywhere uh are you you're a wizard did you go to school i'm a witch i'm a witch it's a little bit different but uh, like a, i didn't really go to school i just kind of self-taught and, uh, i had a, a mentor uh taught me some stuff you're not a hag though not that a hag would tell me excuse me <laughs> that's like that's a common misconception <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but I'm a very beautiful witch, and uh, it's all thanks to my favorite theory of beauty things, which I can tell you about if you want to take my seminar. Well, if you know anything about hags, they can be very beautiful when they want to. Also, I understand it's offensive, but also, <laughs> I want to protect this business and Martha, so I thought I'd ask. Sorry for you being... You might want to ask for some facial moisturizer. You know what? Yeah, I really... You try being a floating head. You're all face. You're all face. We Thank you. Help you. Yeah. I just went back to the best, best face. Time. He he. Put your best face. Forward. He summons four mage hands that go like this. <laughs> four of them. Um. And then uh, so he shows you back back to the office, and while uh, Sarah is back there, he goes, "All right, guys, I got to get back to work," and he has two mage hands and he goes it's really weird to watch but he goes like this he goes all right bye guys (laughs) like you know like the um the classic japanese uh we knew pose i'm doing this for the podcast also so because oh i see yeah the the peace signs the two pieces yeah pieces up by yeah and so 
Yeah. Can I ask that we all get com uh, com callers in case we need to reach them? Oh, um, well, uh, I think my um, once you go out of the city, uh, we can get that arranged. I think they're pretty expensive, but if you are as good as I hope you guys are, you'll right be... Now we should just yell for you? No, hold on, Aradia, Jesus. Can you guys just... <laughs> Christ. Do I have to get in bed with you guys to give me a break? Uh, so... Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe later. Martha might join us, and she goes, Oh, no, Max, I'm married. Um... <laughs> And uh, Max goes, easy, Martha. I know, I'm just... Uh, so, yes, they're expensive, but once you, you know, complete a couple... You do, do these things, we can arrange it. You'll be part of the business. And uh, for now, I can... If you're close, if you're within uh, a couple districts of the Arbor Green, I can telepathically... I'll check in with you. How about that? You can't talk to me without these things, but I'll check in with you a couple times a day. Uh, it's just one of my abilities, and um, you can uh, inform me about your your progress. Sounds good? Feels, in, feels invasive, but it's fine. Yeah, it seems a little like... Oh, Christ. <laughs> like, you're going to, like our minds without our permission and when you can't respond or help us. no you can respond but like you can't contact him uh, and Prady, Prady, when keep in mind he con he talks to you guys through that same method he goes we have that rapport yeah, and he goes yeah, <laughs> in a bed together. yeah he's Prady yeah. gets Prady starts to get like do you guys feel the same way and then you guys reassure me he goes oh thanks guys that makes me feel better um and max goes um you know, this is like, and he starts getting aggravated, and Martha goes, Max, Max, your blood pressure, come on, just, <laughs> and, <From where? laughs> and, and he goes, you're right, Martha, and he goes, all right, you guys, I'm, I'm going back to work, all right, um, I'll check in with you tomorrow in the morning or whatever, all right? Okay. All right. Um... That's fine. Okay. So I'm just going to go to your office and I've got some spells. I'll be right Yeah, whatever. Um, and that's where we're going to leave it tonight, folks. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, thank you to the players. And we'll be back next Sunday at 4 p.m. I'm sweating like a, <laughs> a s s tea kettle. I don't know what analogy I was going for. Oh my gosh, I just remembered that I Okay. Oh, no. All right. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Bye. Bye. I'm going to end.